Hi guys, welcome to this channel. I'm Akanksha from Psychologic and today we're going to discuss biological motives. This video is part of a series focused on the topic of motivation. If you like the content of this video, please make sure to like it and subscribe to this channel. So let's get into it. There are two types of motives, biological and psychosocial. Biological motives are also known as physiological motives as they are guided mostly by the physiological mechanisms of the body. Psychosocial motives, on the other hand, are primarily learned from the individual's interactions with various environmental factors. However, both types of motives are interdependent on each other. This means that in some kinds of situations, the biological factors may trigger a motive, whereas in some other situations, psychosocial factors may trigger the motive. So you should keep in mind that no motive is absolutely biological or psychosocial. Rather, they are aroused in the individual with varying combinations. Biological Motives The biological or physiological approach to explain motivation is the earliest attempt to understand causes of behavior. We have internal physiological imbalances known as needs that produce drive which stimulates behavior leading to certain actions towards achieving goals which reduce the drive. The earliest explanations of motivation relied on the concept of instinct. The term instinct denotes inborn patterns of behavior that are biologically determined rather than learned. Some common human instincts include curiosity, flight, repulsion, reproduction, and parental care. Instincts are innate tendencies found in all members of a species that direct behavior in predictable ways. The term instinct most approximately refers to an urge to do something. Some of the basic biological needs explained by this approach are hunger, thirst, and sex, which are essential for sustenance of the individual. Hunger when someone is hungry, the need for food dominates everything else. Of course, we must eat to live. But what makes us feel hungry? Studies have indicated that many events inside and outside the body may trigger hunger or inhibit it. The triggers for hunger include stomach contractions, which signify that the stomach is empty, a low concentration of glucose in the blood, a low level of protein, and the amount of fats stored in the body. The liver also responds to the lack of bodily fuel by sending nerve impulses to the brain. The smell, taste, and appearance of food may also result in a desire to eat. None of these alone gives you the feeling that you are hungry. All in combination act with external factors such as taste, color by observing others eating and the smell of food to help you understand that you are hungry. So it can be said that our food intake is regulated by a complex feeding satiation system located in the hypothalamus, liver and other parts of the body as well as the external cues available in the environment. Some physiologists hold that changes in the metabolic function of the liver results in a feeling of hunger. The liver sends a signal to a part of the brain known as the hypothalamus. The two regions of the hypothalamus that are involved in hunger are the lateral hypothalamus and the ventromedial hypothalamus. The lateral hypothalamus is considered to be the excitatory area. Animals eat when this area is stimulated. When it is damaged, animals stop eating and die of starvation. The ventromedial hypothalamus is located in the middle of the hypothalamus, which is otherwise known as the hunger controlling area as it inhibits the hunger drive. 
Now using this information, let me know in the comments below what you can understand about people who overeat and become obese and people who eat very little or who are on a diet. Thirst. What would happen to you if you were deprived of water for a long time? What makes you feel thirsty? When we are deprived of water for a period of several hours, the mouth and throat become dry, which leads to dehydration of body tissues. Drinking water is necessary to wet a dry mouth, but a dry mouth does not always result in water drinking behavior. In fact, processes within the body itself control thirst and drinking of water. Water must get into the tissues sufficiently enough to remove dryness of mouth and throat. Motivation to drink water is mainly triggered by the conditions of the body like loss of water from cells and reduction of blood volume. When water is lost by bodily fluids, water leaves the interior of the cells. The anterior hypothalamus contains nerve cells called osmoreceptors, which generate nerve impulses in case of cell dehydration. These nerve impulses act as a signal for thirst and drinking. When thirst is regulated by loss of water, from osmoreceptors, it is called cellular dehydration thirst. But what mechanisms stop the drinking of water? Some researchers assume that the mechanism which explains the intake of water is also responsible for stopping the intake of water. Others have pointed out that the role of stimuli resulting from the intake of water in the stomach must have something to do with the stopping of drinking water. Sex. One of the most powerful drives in both animal and human beings is the sex drive. Motivation to engage in sexual activity is a very strong factor influencing human behavior. However, sex is far more than just a biological motive. It is different from other primary motives like hunger and thirst in many ways. For example, Sexual activity is not necessary for an individual's survival. Homeostasis is not the goal of sexual activity, and your sex drive develops with age. In the case of human beings, the sex drive is very closely regulated biologically, but sometimes it is very difficult to classify sex as a purely biological drive. Physiologists suggest that intensity of a sexual urge is dependent upon chemical substances circulating in the blood known as sex hormones. Studies on animals as well as human beings have mentioned that sex hormones secreted by the gonads, that is the testes in males and the ovaries in females, are responsible for sexual motivation. Sexual motivation is also influenced by the endocrine glands such as the adrenal and pituitary glands. Sexual drive in human beings is primarily stimulated by external stimuli and its expression depends upon cultural learning. It is a powerful force that creates intimacy, pleasure, bonding and reproduction. So, to recap, biological motives include hunger, thirst and sex. If you're interested in good quality mental health resources, do check out my Etsy shop. The link is provided in the description box below. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed watching it. If you like the content of this video, please press the like button and subscribe to this channel. As always, thanks for watching.